thank you very much, Nella, uh, for uh, this uh, introduction and uh, setting the tone so that we can go a bit forward and know about what uh, the project actually uh, produced throughout this one and a half years period and how it can, uh, how we did this and uh, how it can contribute to the local needs in terms of policy or in terms of any kind of decisions. So I am Pragya. I, I think I'm known to many of the uh, person participants uh, already here. Uh, I, I was working with Laila for the last couple of years and then it has been a very good experience working with uh, uh, different uh, partner agencies in Maldives like NDMA and uh, MMS have uh, received a lot of support and uh, you know, uh, uh, cooperation uh, in throughout the period. So I think uh, we all know that you know climate change uh, is very very relevant to Maldives and then uh, how the we, we all can see how the changes in the environment uh, the related hazards or the you know extreme uh, events or situation is, is there in Maldives the number of uh, events that are happening uh, some of them are really increasing in some of the islands and at all this data is graciously provided by NDMA regarding the number of events from 2014 to 2021 and uh, we could see that you know number of uh, events in the recent year have uh, really uh, increased in many of the atolls which which actually leads us to the rationale why should we think about you know why should we uh, do the in deep impact analysis uh, on uh, uh, the subnational characteristics of uh, climate change and climate related variables uh, to know more what's going to happen in the future. So as it is happening, as uh, it is also been projected, uh, also been predicted uh, by IPCC, on a global scenario, we all know temperatures is increasing, precipitation uh, patterns are not uniform, it used to be earlier, the seasonal patterns are different, the extreme events are you know, coming in a uh, very intensive way, and which is impacting the most vulnerable population um, a lot. Also, it is projected for uh, small islands that, uh, you know, uh, the sea level rise and floods, this kind of scenarios is going to increase in, in, in future. And uh, it has been said that if additional 5 or 10 centimeter sea level rises, and it doubles the flooding scenario in the Indian Ocean um, and Maldives is, is, is exactly situated uh, there. So through this project, um, we, we try to uh, see all those factors which are very relevant uh, to Maldives. And in this project presentation, I'm, I will go through uh, first how we did it, uh, a bit about a little bit of the methodology, uh, what we have done, and what we can do with this kind of information. So uh, the first one is risk analysis. Uh, to understand what the data actually uh, uh, shows us we, we need to know about what what the scenario what the climate projection what is uh, what are the data what are the drivers uh, that has been considered in this project so uh, in while generating the climate projection scenarios the main drivers are actually uh, considered which are like you know social or socioeconomic development in this uh, project we have considered very recent uh, scientific climate projection system developed by cnip 6 project and the scenarios they can consider are social uh, socioeconomic pathways so these socioeconomic pathways are developed in a way so that social and economic development in the in the countries they can be fed into uh, the model and the trends can be fed into the models and then that can actually uh, define the nature of changes in the climate pattern in the future. So like in the first step, if we look, at, look into the data part, it, it actually has drivers from the social and economical aspects of the countries, which actually defines the emission pattern in the atmosphere. And all, all those information goes into the climate models when they, when they can actually give us the climate projection of the uh, potential, probable uh, temperature, precipitation, uh, sea level rise, or wind pattern in the future. And those information can guide us to uh, the 
exponential impact in the in, in the in the countries in different environments in different population in different sectors and uh, that can lead us into the you know uh, cause of that this leads from cause to effect uh, of the climate change uh, through the climate models and the scenarios in this project we have uh, considered two different scenarios one is uh, ssp2 that is the business as usual scenario uh, which is in the middle of the cycle which tells us that if uh, we continue uh, the development or the adaptation or the mitigation or the uh, measures that we take uh, in a way that we are doing currently what can be the changes in the climate pattern in the future and then another uh, scenario that we considered are ssp3 uh, which is a kind of you know extreme scenario where uh, it is in both adaptation and mitigation might be challenging because we might not take the necessary steps that we need to take to address the changes in the climate uh, due to uh, climate changes on on for this project we uh, initially like lana mentioned that we initially was uh, looking into the regional uh, uh, data sets but then uh, from the feedback from the sec uh, this feedback from the stakeholders we actually uh, um, uh, looked for downscale information and uh, with the gracious help from um, asia pacific climate change adaptation information platform uh, we could uh, develop 5 km uh, by 5 km data uh, which could actually uh, tell us more uh, you know more detailed information about the climate pattern of uh, of of maldives and the variables that we con uh, considered are uh, precipitation temperature surface wind and uh, sea level rise for the for two time periods uh, we did the analysis one is near term uh, by 2040 and then uh, next 20 years that is 2060 so that no what is coming in next 20 years and the next 40 years so the enhancing the granularity of data actually increase the increase the the uh, visibility of risk uh, visibility of concentration of risk or you know uh, potential risk in the future and uh, that's the transition from uh, 100 km data to 5 km data uh, with those data we did further analysis on the impacts and vulnerability assessment and also we uh, created detailed land use land cover maps of entire maldives including have inhabited or uh, other islands which are not uh, populated uh, so for every island we have created this uh, database uh, the this the basic data was uh, satellite images and also we uh, took the classification system of uh, the existing land use data which was created uh, by adb uh, in 2020 with with the 2020 2016 data sets and uh, those data were with uh, the environment department they provided us those data and based on those data we updated the land use for the entire country so basic methodology of doing uh, risk assessment was uh, overlaying different information on the top of hazard to see uh, where the you know extreme hazards are uh, coinciding with the developmental uh, indicators or the social indicators uh, like four hazards we uh, looked into flood uh, drought cyclone and sea level rise those are the hazards which is like right we look at the top of the layer top layer and then we collected some uh information national uh, level information on population on agriculture energy infrastructure other critical infrastructure and then overlaid with them to find out the risk hot spot who could people exposed and potential impacts on the on different pertinent sectors uh, which are climate sensitive sectors and uh, relatable in terms of uh, in, in, with respect to models next we i will show you some of the examples of uh, the results that we have uh, developed in this project 
So these are some of the land use maps. The land use maps are based on high resolution satellite images uh, from 2021-2022. It is uh, done for all the atolls and all the islands of Maldives. And um, the base data, as I, as I was mentioning, was uh, from ADV data, uh, data sets that were created from 2016 um, land, land uh, uh, higher satellite, satellite images. So these are some of the examples of different atolls and islands, the land use land cover maps. From this land use land cover map, we could identify the striking changes in the in different islands. For example, in in um, in, in this uh, slide, you can see that for the first uh, box, first two boxes, it shows uh, there has been a new airport constructed in that, in that island and that was not there in 2016 and in 2022 we can see that also if you could see it it is it is the 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 urban area which is a pink one uh, has expanded northwise a bit in the second box second two boxes uh, the left one is from 2016 where there were no declared island but if you go to the right box second right box it shows that, that there are some reclaimed area from the reef which was done um, around 2021-2022 and in the last box box which is from Lamu at all uh, we could see some of the areas with uh, more expansion of agriculture the yellowish area are uh, agriculture and red are uh, I think I think it's visible here the region in the region that uh, the urban areas have also uh, expanded a little bit and agricultural area as you could see uh, it has also expanded a little bit uh, and the, these are the things that uh, we could understand from comparing two different land use pattern in two different time scale and uh, it is very clear that it has changed in similarly it has changed in many islands um, urban agricultural areas new research resource islands has come up and then reefs reclaimed and uh, many uh, agricultural expansion have happened in, in many uninhabited islands so this is that information and then we will see later on what we can do with this information uh, with the statistics uh, uh, we can see that you know there has been a drastic increase in island resorts and also um, urban areas has expanded uh, quite a bit as well as agricultural areas there has been decrease in forest cover and uh, wetland cover and uh, inland borders and uh, maximum increase has been in uh, in, in island, in new island resorts and in urban areas. Also, we have updated maps for reclaimed island, those those islands that were reclaimed after 2010. And uh, from the satellite images from these two time periods, 2010 and 2022, uh, it's been found that around 15, more than 15 square kilometer areas has been reclaimed from the reef. And uh, as we can see from the graph, Kafu et al. tops the least uh, in terms of land reclaimed by 2022. And these are some of the examples of uh, reclaimed islands uh, in different part of the uh, country. Next is uh, hazard uh, trend using the climate projection data sets uh, we were mentioning. Uh, this is hazard trend for precipitation, that is rainfall. Uh, the darkest red area represent where there, there is likelihood of you know, increased uh, precipitation, the most increase in precipitation and uh, highest precipitation. And then you know, the, the orange area has the next highest and uh, so on. Uh, from the graph, it is showing that from the baseline period, which is uh, 1981 to 2000, uh, the, the, the rainfall has increased across the island. Everywhere rainfall has increased. Uh, but more increase is concentrated on the central part of the islands uh, at all, uh, country. So the summary would be rainfall is, uh, of course, it is increasing in many parts of the world and it is going to increase across the country uh, compared to the baseline period. 
the central atolls, Kafu, Alif Alifu, Anantalu, etc., they are likely to receive more rainfall across all the scenarios and timelines. Uh, more of the uh, atolls and islands are likely to receive highest rainfall, higher rainfall in the worst case scenario, that is, uh, that is the SSP3 by the end of 2060. Many of the flood prone areas are likely to flood occurrence of similar event in both near and mid term scenario. Uh, many of the central atolls are likely to receive up to 100 centimeter millimeter increase in average annual rainfall from the baseline period. Uh, we could see that you know uh, one of the largest island uh, in terms of agriculture. Uh, Many of the uh, area where agriculture is very popular, they, uh, they are doing a lot of agriculture. Precipitation or uh, rainfall is, is increasing, and uh, it might affect the, 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 the production. Similarly, for temperature, uh, temperature, uh, the trend shows that uh, it is uh, increasing uh, from the baseline. It is increasing globally, uh, but it is increasing also in differently in different part of the uh, of the country. Most of the northern and northeastern atolls, uh, northwestern atolls, are likely to have uh, more increase, higher temperature in the future, uh, in upcoming uh, futures uh, in 20 or 40 years. Uh, Ha Alifu, Ha Halu, Alif Alif, Ha Halu, Fafu, these at all are uh, going to have more increase in uh, temperature, uh, average temperature. In some of the islands, the, uh, the increase in temperature might go up to 1.6 degrees to 1.7 degrees in worst case scenario. And uh, Many of the islands have, uh, you know, the climate sensitive sector already uh, established there. For surface wind, the results are a little different. Uh, it is showing that the seasonal sur average surface wind uh, is uh, the trend is like you know the wind speed is uh, going to decrease or remain almost same uh, like the baseline period in future. Uh, but mainly the northern at all might have more uh, you know uh, higher surface wind speed uh, than the rest of the you know central or southern part of the uh, country. Uh, it is going to decrease uh, both in near term and mid term period. Uh, the northern atolls, uh, as I was saying, that it might, uh, you know, have uh, the higher amount of uh, wind speed uh, than uh, that is part of the atolls. The northern atoll already are uh, have the cyclonic uh, risk of cyclones and storms. So any any uh, uh, any this kind of event in the future. Uh, uh, are likely to happen uh, in the in the in the future uh, than the than the baseline period, uh, but but the however southern and central at all are likely to have baseline like situation. Uh, the last one is sea level rise. Um, sea level rise is again uh, if you see the trend, it is uh, likely to increase and most increases observed uh, across the uh, northern and central atolls uh, across all the scenarios um, mainly you know ha alif ha halu uh, shabiani uh, kafu ha buddhist atolls uh, might uh, uh, the sea level might rise more than the other part uh, the northern and the central atoll may experience increase in the sea level up to 0.9 meter by 2442, more than one meter under worst case scenario. And if we look at the multi-hazard uh, scenario, so we all uh, included all these hazard and uh, uh, combined uh, the probability of this all, all these hazard, and then we tried to see how what is the you know um, the scenario of multi-hazard because many a time it happens like flood is happening along with a storm, and it actually have a cascading impact on the on the sectors and the population. So in case of multi-hazards, again uh, there is increasing trend of multi hazards across all this um, across the country from from baseline to um, worst case scenario uh, but some of the adults here listed here we have more impacts due to multi hazard than the rest and the trend showing that from baseline to um, worst case scenario it is uh, it is likely to increase
the intensity as well as uh, the, the probability. So with this information, we also have overlaid uh, other sectoral information like I was telling earlier, uh, like population. Uh, many of the islands and atolls have higher different population concentration, and we know that Mali has the maximum population um, among Maldives, uh, among all the islands. Uh, these are some of the examples uh, shown in the uh, slides where there are more concentration of population. Again, population data sets, the raster data sets, what was available, uh, best available data that we have used. Uh, it is very difficult to get the disaggregated data sets, special data uh, available, open source uh, to work on. Uh, but this is the best data, which is called World Park data sets, and it's, it's, it's based on 2020 um, population. Uh, numbers and this uh, information shows that you know 50 percent of total population almost 50 percent of total population likely to be exposed to high precipitation under business as usual scenario and 55 under worst case scenario and if we go from the you know uh, the baseline from, from the from ssp2 business as usual to ssp3 worst case at the long term midterm the exposure is uh, increasing um, to both high and very high, uh, you know, in, uh, very high precipitation. Now, uh, if we see the population uh, population exposure uh, for uh, sea level rise, so we know that Maldives has you know lowest terrain in the world. Uh, with 80% of its islands has less than one meter uh, um, above above mid sea level. And it is predicted that you know if global sea level rises uh, the way it is rising, uh, nearly 31 to 50 percent of population are likely to be exposed to sea level rise and related events in the coastal areas of um, coastal areas. And uh, we know here that you know uh, people are living within 100 kilometer, 100 meter of uh, coastal area. Infrastructures are there in the 100 meter of uh, uh, coastal area. So it is really important to. Uh, look into this information, uh, which says that you know um, uh, this is this is about uh, the temperature. Uh, if temperature increases by uh, 1.6 degrees, uh, around 90 percent of total population might be exposed to. Uh, 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 temperature and increase in uh, temperature. Again, if it is uh, about you know urban areas which has lower elevation, around 14 percent of them are under high risk of uh, one meter increase in the sea level under future climate scenario. Again, we look into the disaggregated population information like female population. Uh, where are the vulnerable population located and where they are mostly you know, uh, exposed? Uh, it is said that up to 99% of female population are likely to be affected by multi-hazard by 2060, the worst case scenario. And 55% of female population are exposed to high precipitation and 16% uh, to 1 meter increase in sea level under worst case scenario. Now, there are many statistics are available uh, from this analysis, which I cannot show within the time frame of uh, of this presentation or this or this event, all this information will be available uh, in the report, and uh, it will be available in the portal as well as uh, will be available with the data sets. Uh, so some of the examples that are very um, striking that I could I I, I try to uh, show um, you. Another uh, uh, exposure analysis we did for agriculture. We know that agriculture is not a very, you know, uh, a big industry in, in Maldives. But uh, what I could understand that Maldives is trying to uh, increase uh, the, in, the independence of, uh, you know, import and all uh, from other countries. Uh, so it is important to uh, know which areas are likely, um, are likely to get affected. Recently, we visited uh, Ghan Island and both Kuluzipishi and Ghan Island, and we could see that you know the the agricultural land, for example, banana banana plantation, papaya plantation, many of them are uh, affected by floods, recent floods, and they are dying. Uh, so it is really very really important to understand which areas uh, might get um, flooded maybe in the future, so that you know proper adaptation measures can be taken to actually resistance. 
So around 26% of agricultural land uh, are uh, likely to be exposed to intense precipitation. And then because uh, many of the islands are like, you know, they don't have the water to go out of the lands, uh, they get stagnant and that destroys the uh, farms. And again, if we talk about the temperature increase, 86% of total agricultural land is exposed to 1.6 degree increase in average temperature. Uh, we did the same thing for sea level rise as well. And uh, we use the elevation data sets here. Uh, the elevation data that we were talking about, it is, a, it is not an open source data set, but it will be available through, uh, through, through our partner agencies here. Uh, most of the islands have their coastal area like you know zero at the sea level and then uh, uh, many areas which are uh, about one meter uh, elevation and uh, many of the agricultural lands in the in those islands are uh, on the either on the edge of low lying areas or on the low lying areas so how it, ha it, it, it impacts, because if sea level rises, uh, first of all, it might cause swells and it coming to your agricultural land. Second, uh, it can uh, cause salt water intrusion in the agricultural land. So this is not just to scare the people who are looking at it, but just to be aware that, OK, this might happen in the future. So let's just focus on some adaptation maybe you know plant some uh, salt resistant species or some uh, you know some embankments or something build some embankments so that the agricultural fields can, uh, does not get impacted by either swells or the precipitation or sea level rise um, the next uh, the, the the graph here is uh, shown is from the portal which we'll be uh, looking at later in this uh, later today so uh, it says that um, in, in Lamu at all uh, is the most affected in terms of agricultural area, uh, exposure to agricultural area and uh, which might face more than one meter increase in the sea level rise. And uh, overall uh, in the country, 30% of agricultural areas with zero to one meter elevation are under risk of one meter increase in sea level rise by 2060 under the worst climate scenario. Similarly, we have done it, done the same thing for uh, in critical infrastructure, which was uh, specifically requested by a DMA. And uh, we could see that in many of the islands, it is very much natural, you know, when the land is limited. Uh, so it is, it is a, uh, it is a decision making where to build the infrastructure. Uh, and this kind of information, I think, uh, can help uh, in, in, in fight for the development of work at the island level many of the many of the islands have their energy infrastructure which is a very critical infrastructure uh, are, are at the fringe of the coastal area right, at the side of the uh, low lying areas and they might get impacted uh, by, by sea level rise uh, by floods and uh, like it is mentioned that 47% of total energy capacity of the uh, of the country are uh, are exposed to uh, highest increase in precipitation by 2060 and 2020 20% uh, 20 are uh, at risk of uh, sea level rise of one meter and I, I could enlist some of the uh, atolls which has the highest highest uh, you know risk hotspot of this uh, of sea level rise in terms of energy capacity We tried to do some uh, matrix to see how uh, the location, how the risk or the impacts are changing uh, if we change from the baseline period to different uh, climate change scenarios. And uh, as you can see that you know some of the islands which are low at risk, both probability and the impact are uh, like Ba et al. and then uh, Fafu and then in the, the lower green corner of the uh, corner of the matrix are uh, moving towards a higher uh, probability and higher impact uh, like Ra, Ra and uh, uh, Ha Alif Mali was in uh, was in the yellow box uh, which is moving to high impact, high probability uh, box uh, by the end of uh, 2060 under worst climate scenario. This is for population. And uh, we have also done for agriculture. And we could see many of the uh, islands which are uh, 
which were low in um, exposure and impact and probability of the of, of hazards are moving into the high impact, high probability of hazards uh, under different uh, scenarios. Uh, we could relate uh, our uh, analysis with the very recent floods that happened in in, in uh, end of December and January, and uh, we, uh, as we can see that uh, the blue dots here, they represent the areas where the flood event used to occur in, in the past, and those areas also have the projection of getting higher precipitation in the future. Uh, if we focus on Mali, that uh, we, the, the elevation data on the top top uh, figure uh, shows that you know the the, the coastal areas, so the areas around the, uh, the boundary of Mali is uh, comparatively lower, and those are the area you could see from the map NDMA provided on the flooded areas have been flooded uh, during the recent maps, the recent flood. Similarly, for uh, the airport island, uh, we could see that many of the areas which are which has you know lower lower elevation, and then uh, they got flooded. Uh, the the figure at the right uh, corner, low right corner, um, is is from the jetty area. I think where the speedboats comes and uh, their their uh, parking area, and those areas got flooded due to during the last uh, uh, the the in precipitation event. And those areas we could see that basically are uh, comparatively lower elevation. That doesn't mean that uh, I mean. It, I mean, they should not build the airport there, but there should be proper system where uh, you know the, this this flood, the areas doesn't get flooded or waterlogged in the future. Really, some of the some of the uh, pictures from uh, at all. Uh, this is these pictures are from Tha at all, but uh, I don't really know which island they are, but. Many of the islands in Thaitol itself have very, very low elevation, uh, and they, the, the flood water comes and gets stagnated inside. It is very difficult to get them out because of you know they, they might have sometimes have lower elevation um, inside the islands, and they, they it's difficult to pump them out uh, using these hand pumps and all. So uh, it, it is, it is. Uh, it is somehow the data we created are very very relatable when we uh, when we come to the the actual scenario what is happening right now uh, and then that's how we we go to our next session is that what can we do with this information so uh, basically land use planning that was a part of the uh, project. It, the the data, database that is created should help in land use planning, expansion of urban areas, where to expand. Uh, if we expand, what are, the, what are the protective measures, what are the adaptation measures we need to uh, take care of? Climate smart agriculture, if, if there is flooding happening recurrently, if, if the areas are low, if, if uh, the agricultural lands are getting impacted and the production is getting impacted, then uh, the, the uh, proper uh, decision should be taken on the in, in choosing right kind of crop um, in, in, uh, while expanding uh, our, uh, our agricultural area. Right areas uh, should can be chosen on the basis of the database that is prepared, and uh, with the areas which which are already under risk, like the last the Garu Island, uh, you see that the there were urban area. This island is basically low. Um, in elevation, and there were urban area, and it is uh, again expanding towards the coastal region, and which is actually uh, making the island more vulnerable to the to, to the uh, you know changes or the floods or uh, sea level rise in the future. So this kind of decision, uh, risk informed decision, can be uh, taken while uh, when when the development decision uh, development planning. Again, prioritizing climate action and investment um, in adaptation. Uh, many areas, um, many islands and atolls are uh, have many population who are employed in uh, employed in agriculture. As we could see, Kafu at all, and then and then in ha, Halu at all in the north, and uh, Lamu, uh, which are you know exposed to uh, multi hazards as well as floods and sea level rise, uh, and then. Uh, in terms of you know protecting people uh, uh, in future, 
who are already you know vulnerable and uh, employed in climate sensitive sectors uh, can be protected through smart investment option and prioritizing this climate action similarly you know many islands which are uh, which are pioneering the tourism sectors and many people are in, uh, employed in those tourism sectors and tourism is one of the sector that is uh, that is uh, contributing a lot of uh, gdp to to all this uh, economy and uh, with this information we can actually prioritize where, where to invest in the future in terms of tourism sector and how we can protect the people who are already employed in the tourism in the risk hard spots likewise you know vulnerable population like population with disabilities we know that we could see for uh, mali is uh, one of the islands which which uh, which are at high risk and there is hot spot both multi hazard or individual hazards uh, and also they have a high number of people with disabilities uh, um, so uh, that can be taken care of while uh, you know creating disaster management plans or uh, risk informed development uh, risk informed policy uh, or inclusive policy but is drr and climate change adaptation so the the so this uh, information created actually uh, is a uh, in in future can contribute to the different programs that government has uh, first of all early, early warning for all uh, overall this uh, this project has uh, you know uh, has a motto of you know disaster risk reduction climate change adaptation uh, to implement them in the, the sub national and national development planning and uh, along with that uh, it can contribute to the first first pillar of early warning for all which is a disaster risk knowledge because it has already developed the information of the where the risks are what are the trend uh, in the risk and uh, who are the vulnerable population or the sectors uh, at risk uh, under different um, scenarios so i think this can be a good contribution from uh, this project to early warning for all initiative also in the sap uh, state action plan uh, strategic action plan uh, in the strategic action plan there are different policies which directly correlate with the output of this project like you know strengthening adaptation action and opportunities to build climate resilient resilient infrastructure and uh, they have a component of integrating the disaster risk reduction and climate change risk management into the local planning for process national planning on drr and climate resilience uh also strengthening national institution institution uh, general capacity and uh, understand the impact of climate change on vulnerable groups up to uh, 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 up to date this um, uh, information with up to date risk information so i think this project uh, could clearly contribute to the uh, policy actions here uh, already planned for the country uh, and also to the ndc because in the ndc uh, there has been high priority given into the strengthening adaptation across uh, adaptation uh, um, in building climate resilience and also emphasized emphasized uh, given uh, to infrastructure resilience early warning disaster risk reduction and climate governments and capacity building uh, has been identified as a cross cutting issue in 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 um, ndc uh which which completely correlate uh, with the output and the activities we have done as part of this project and above all sdg that i think uh, lila has already mentioned that uh, mainly the capacity building and strengthening the institutional uh, knowledge uh, in terms of risk risk analysis and in, in terms of risk uh, information uh, clearly at, uh, contribute to the targets of you know climate actions uh, sdg 13 different targets and you know sustainable cities and um, uh, sustainable cities and also because we also uh, uh, looked into the vulnerable population like women this this output also contribute uh, to the targets uh, of gender equality and uh, reducing inequality uh, in the, in the society so i'll stop here uh, and uh, if anyone has any question uh, i would like to thank throughout the throughout this project uh, i have been supported by many people i have uh, written here and um, any question is is welcome thank you
I don't think there is any restriction of using this data because uh, most of the data are open source. So uh, it is for the country to use. We would be happy if there are capacities and they can use reuse the data uh, for other any kind of you know sectoral analysis or any kind of analysis that fits into government planning and uh, processes. Uh, I think there is uh, no restriction. So one thing that I want to mention, there were lots of predictions, projections. Do you have any questions about those aspects of the data? Or do you find it relevant or what you would expect to see in Maldives uh, based on the events that are happening or the patterns that you see? The theme of uh, changes because of the climate as well. I think there's a lot of change happening on the ground as well. And there was a mention that one of the data sets that is going to apply to this. Um, in a world where 0 0.002 kilometer resolution data is easily accessible in models, I guess that would severely impact the analytics done as well. And I'm curious to see how. Uh, that change can be managed. Uh, even climate projection data? Oh, projection data. Uh, it, it can enhance the quality of the projection if uh, you have a high resolution data. Again, uh, only increasing resolution, I it's my opinion, you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, only increasing resolution doesn't really mean you will get uh, a more granular data. I mean, there has to be the climate variability within that, you know, amount of area you are talking about. Otherwise, cutting down the size of the pixel doesn't really increase the granularity of information. There should be a, a threshold. You have to understand that, uh, or we have to rather understand that what is the range of climate variability? Like it, it changes the way, uh, it, uh, it changes every one kilometer, or it, it changes every five kilometer, or it changes every 20 kilometers. That I think we need to understand. And if, if you can understand that, if there is variability within one kilometer or within sub, sub kilometer range, then it's uh, very valuable to use those kind of information uh, for climate projection. I mean, it's not increasing. Or Changing rather, uh, then I don't think you know just just the sake of increasing the uh, decreasing the resolution doesn't really increase the amount of information uh, in the data sets. Um, so one question here. I think all the data will be available, like Lala mentioned earlier, through MMS and DMA and MNU and. Uh, I mean, it, they can be contacted through proper channels to access the data. There is no you can question. check with the online participants. Is there anybody else who might have a question? Yeah. Is there any question from the online participants? Uh, IPCC gives us the information on regional level. Does this give us information at the country level? Yeah, it doesn't have the country level data. It, is, it has a regional projection. And uh, uh, we used IPCC data. Also used, we used a baseline uh, for, uh, because in IPCC data, if you if you are interested, you can go and visit. Uh, in the IPCC data, they give the change from the baseline. 
sea level rise change from the baseline. And then we don't know the baseline. So we need to have the baseline. So I have the baseline data and then the change. So we know how much it is actually rising. So the IPCC, IPCC doesn't have the baseline data. It's not available online. Yeah, so we use a different baseline data that is also like, you know, very credible source uh, from Copernicus we used. Uh, so we included the baseline along with the change. You cannot just see the change. And so the baseline, 15 degrees, 14. 14, yes, yes. Okay, I got a question online. Which part of Maldives you found more climate uh, variability? In terms of sea, uh, sea surface temperature. Uh, we did not consider sea surface temperature here in this project. Yeah. So that would be something that might be considered for future work. Uh, right. Did, yeah. did you take into account that you were going to sit down with? I think usually in the near wetland area we found 1.6 to 1.8 meters in elevation height. So, this is the same because we should account for that forecast and the students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I think the uh some of the island reclaimed area has a lower elevation according to this data sets. I, I did not check for all the islands there where there was reclaimed. Some islands are definitely above. Uh, and uh, for the data sets that we have, uh, we have the data for the land. Okay? We have the elevation data for the land. And the reclaimed area is a new area which are going to be reclaimed. Uh, so I think we need much newer data or updated data on the elevation of the on the sea or the other part where it is going to be reclaimed. But uh, in terms of uh, you know precipitation or sea level rise, we know uh, that these areas are uh, are prone. Uh, they have a risk of uh, you know for the sea level rise up to certain level. So whenever it is, they are going to reclaim some land. It is. Um, it is, I mean, it is. It should be good to have a, you know, higher elevation um, rather than what is already there. Uh, make a, make the elevation a bit higher. Uh, higher. Uh, uh, one thing we noticed, uh, and for BPS, uh, during our New Year's work, that uh, the newly reclaimed areas is just like uh, higher in the normal island or so it leads to uh, flooding. Of the island after heavy rainfall, the water from the newly reclaimed area will, uh, uh, will flow into the island so it's higher. So it could lead to flooding in the island. So I guess you look into this reduction in the forecast. Yeah, I think that the, these are the decisions I think you can make, make from these data sets to see you know, which are the areas or the reclaimed areas where there might go, um, uh, might get more precipitation in future, and then how to deal with the situation. That's how this data is supposed to help with the decision making. If this reclaimed area might expect, uh, expect in, you know, higher uh, precipitation in the future, uh, pro probably you know some drainage channel or something uh, it, it should be built while reclaiming, or there should be any um, uh, measures that actually doesn't flow the water from the higher reclaimed area to the lower uh, previous areas. Uh, that, that should be taken care of. I think uh, that, that's how this project, uh, this information is uh, supposed to help uh, the land use planning. I don't know. <laughs> you can read it out loud for everyone. Can we ask them? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, would, I would request, request Dr. Sanjay to please intervene um, on the question you have asked. So you can add, add your inputs here, please. Actually, Kulik, this is related to warming of Arabian Sea. Uh, Arabian Sea is warming faster than many other sea. 
uh, which has implication on the risk scenario of Maldives, uh, implications also in terms of the El Nino La Nina phenomena, which are becoming uh, more, you know, becoming more visible with the warming Arabian Sea. So the future risk scenario of Maldives, uh, there will be some obvious impact of warming Arabian Sea expanding dimension of the El Nino La Nina in the future. Right. Thank you. So let's make an introduction. Uh, the basically comment was from Dr. Sanjay Srivastava, the chief of disaster risk reduction in uh, SCAP office in Bangkok. Uh, who's been actually leading this project uh, throughout the whole uh, uh, stage from actually the proposal in collaboration uh, with the national partners. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't be with us, but I want to also thank him uh, for giving both Kragi and I the opportunity to be involved in this work. Uh, and uh, alongside Mihiko, uh, lead the work, especially from the technical perspective, uh, to develop and uh, disseminate, uh, collaborate with all of the partners uh, in uh, advancement of the uh, project. Um, okay, any other questions? So I hope it's a good sign that we finished early. <laughs> uh, if I'm not mistaken, the next session is going to be after lunch. So we're going to have a bit of a longer uh, lunch break today. Uh, with the panels tomorrow, I don't think that's the situation. So let's all enjoy it. So we're going to have the next uh, session at 1.30. Uh, I just want uh, the colleagues from uh, MNU to help everybody with the location of the lunch. And I think uh, lunch is going to be ready at 12. Is that correct? Lunch is going to be ready at 12, so in about like 15 minutes. Uh, and from this point on, uh, the uh, ne uh, next parts of the event is going to be on the fourth floor. Uh, so uh, we are going to be having uh, a, con a computer lab session so that you can uh, have a hands-on training with the portal. Uh, that's tomorrow. Uh, but uh, for the rest of the today, we're going to go have our lunch, uh, go to the fourth floor uh, classroom that is going to be uh, prepared uh, for uh, participation because it has a better uh, facility for online participation and uh, basically uh, presentations that we are going to have uh, from uh, other colleagues out of Maldives as well. Uh, so from this point on, we're going to be meeting you there for every session, so 1.30 in the classroom. Again, MNU colleagues are available uh, as supportive as they always are uh, to help everybody find the room uh, and their signs are available as well. Thank you so much for uh, being with us so far. And we hope you enjoy the rest of the sessions in the evening. There's going to be a concentrated, uh, basically, session on the risk and resilient portal, uh, the overall portal that uses uh, the Maldives page in a specific, and then some of the upcoming features of the portal. And we have one special intervention at the end of that uh, session uh, from the UNDP colleagues in Bangkok uh, talking a little bit about the work that they're doing on the loss and damage uh, aspects for Maldives as well. Thank you so much, and I'll see you at 1.30 in uh, the classroom uh, on the fourth floor. I hope you enjoy your lunch time. Thank you, and for online participants as well. We continue with the same link uh, for all three days. Have a good day.